Today we're going to be learning about raising a product to a power. First let's have a look at what I mean when, I'm, when I talk about raising a product to a power. So an example could be something like this, where you have 2 times 3 in brackets raised to the power of 4. So over here, my base of my power is 2 times 3. And that is a product, because a product is what you get when you multiply things together. So in this case, my base is a product. Then over here I've got my exponent. Or my index of my power. And then over here I've got, this is my whole power. Okay, so that's kind of what we're talking about when we're looking at uh, products that are being raised to powers. where Inside the brackets, you've got things that are being multiplied together, and then outside the bracket, it is raised to a power or has an exponent. Okay, so let's have a look at an example where we're actually going to work with it. So in this example, it's similar to the one that I just showed you. It's 2 times 3 in brackets, but it's raised to the power of 5. Okay, so what this means, what any power means, is I take the base and I multiply the number that the exponent tells me together. Okay, so I've got five of the two times threes that I'm going to be multiplying together. So that's what this is equal to. Two times three multiplied by two times three multiplied by two times three multiplied by two times three and then the last one multiplied by two times three. Okay, so that is what this means. It's I've got five two times threes that have been multiplied together. Okay, so now I'm going to take this and I'm going to rearrange it and I'm going to put all the twos together because remember multiplication is commutative so I can rearrange them if I want to. So I'm going to put all the twos together so I'm going to have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 and then I've got all my threes times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Now the fact that I've got different symbols for my multiplication doesn't matter they're just different ways of showing the same thing so it is all multiplication, so I can rearrange it. I'm just showing it like this with different symbols so that you can easily tell and where everything is. Okay, so this over here, now I'm multiplying five twos together, and that is the same as two to the power of five. Times, here I've got three, uh, five threes that I'm multiplying together, so that is the same as three to the power of five. So if you take this over here and you look from there straight to here, what happened is that each of the uh, factors in my product over here ended up being given that exponent over there. Okay, so this takes us now to our rule. Okay, so our rule is that when we are raising a product to a power, we have to take each factor of that product and we have to work with each factor separately. So, for each factor, We keep the base the same, and we multiply the exponents. Now you didn't actually see this happening. You didn't actually see this happening in this example, but if either of these had had exponents, say I had 2 to the power of 3 
or 2 to the power of 4 or something. Then I would have had 2 to the power of 4 times 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 2 to the power of 4, which would have ended up giving me 2 to the power of 20. So then I would have taken the exponent that's in here and multiplied it. So it actually did happen, you just didn't see it, because remember, the exponent, if you can't see an exponent, then the exponent is 1. So each of these actually have an exponent of 1. So if I say 1 times 5, I do get 5. Now if I say here also, 1 times 5, I do get 5. So for each factor in my product, I basically am going to apply the rule that we learned when we were doing raising a power to a power, that we take, we keep the base the same and we multiply the exponent. So we take the exponent of that factor and I multiply it by the exponent outside. Okay, so this can also be written like this. Okay, so over here I've got two factors, okay, so A and B are representing two different factors of a product and that is being raised, and it's in brackets, and it's being raised to a power outside the brackets, so I've got an M outside as an exponent. Then that exponent gets given to each of those factors and I would treat it in the same way as I do when I am raising a power to a power. So if there is an exponent on either of these, I multiply it by the exponent outside as well. Okay, so now let's have a look at some examples where we're actually going to use the rule. So the first example we're going to look at is this one over here, where I've got 3 multiplied by 5 to the power of 4 in brackets and I need to square that. Okay, so my rule says that for each factor, when I am when I'm raising a product to a power, for each factor I need to take the keep the base the same and I need to multiply the exponents. So let's first do our 3. Okay, that's the first factor that I'm going to deal with. So the base stays the same. And remember, you can't see the exponent here, but it, it is actually an invisible little 1. Okay, so I have 1 times 2, and that gives me 2. So it becomes 3 to the power of 2 times. Then this one over here, I've got 5 to the power of 4 squared. So I keep the base the same, and I multiply the exponent. So that's 4 times 2 is 8. So that's what we should get for that one. So now I'm going to give you some that you're going to work on for yourself. And I'm going to give you two minutes to work on these examples.
Okay, you should hopefully be done with that by now. So let's go through those examples. So the first one for question A, we had 2 times 3 cubed in brackets to the power of 6. So first I'm going to take my 2. It has got an invisible little exponent of 1, which I'm going to multiply by the 6, and that gives me 2 to the power of 6. Multiplied by 3 to the power of 3 times 6 is 18. So for question A, you should have got 2 to the power of 6 times 3 to the power of 18. Question B, we've got 3 squared times 7 in brackets to the power of 5. So I'm going to take the 3 first, and I, the base stays the same, and I multiply 2 by 5, and that gives me 10. So I get 3 to the power of 10 times 7 to the power of 5, because... The 7 has a little exponent that we can't see of 1, and I multiply that by 5, and that gives me 5. So I get 3 times 10, 3 to the power of 10 times 7 to the power of 5. And then for the last one, question C, we have 11 cubed in brackets times 3 to the power of 4, also in the brackets, or to the power of 8 outside the brackets. So now I'm going to take the 11 and the 3, but I'm actually going to write them the other way around because I want to write them from smallest to biggest. So I'm going to work on the 3 first. So I've got 3 to the power of 4 times 8 is 32, multiplied by 11 to the power of 3 times 8 is 24. Okay, so that's what you should get for question C. Right, now let's have a look at question, at the next example. Now in this example, You can see that we've got a fraction. So we've got 3 to the power of 5 over 5 to the power of 6. And that is all being raised to the power of 3. Okay, so now the good news is our rule works exactly the same for fractions as it does for products. Okay, so exactly what we did when we were raising a product to a power, we're going to do the same thing. These are also going to act as factors, so I'm going to take my 3, I'm going to um, raise it, the 3 to the power of 5 to the power of 3, I'm going to raise the 5 to the power of 6 also to the power of 3. Okay, so I'm going to end up with this. So my 3 stays the same, but I have 5 times 3 is 15 over 5 to the power of 6 times 3, which is 18. So that's, that is what you should get for that example. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to work on for yourself. And I'm going to give you two minutes to work on these.
Okay, you should be done. So let's go through those examples. So in question A, we had 2 over 3 squared to the power of 4. So first I'm going to take my 2. It stays 2, but I'm going to, the exponent is going to change. So you can't see it, but there's a little 1 over there, which I multiply by the 4, and that gives me 2 to the power of 4 over the 3. Again, the base is going to stay 3, but I'm going to multiply the 2 by 4, and that gives me 8. So I get 2 to the power of 4 over 3 to the power of 8 for question A. Question B. I've got 11 squared over 13 cubed in brackets to the power of 3. So first, the 11... The base stays the same, and I multiply 2 by 3, and that gives me 6. And then the 13, the base stays the same, and I multiply 3 by 3, and that gives me 9. So that gives me 11 to the power of 6 over 13 to the power of 9. And then the last one, we've got 5 squared times 7 cubed times 9, or over 19 to the power of 4, in brackets, squared. So first, I'm going to take my 5 stays 5, but I'm going to multiply the 2 by the 2, and that gives me 4. So it's 5 to the power of 4 times 7 to the power of 3 times 2 is 6 over 19 to the power of 4 times 2, which is 8. So that's what you should have got for question C. Okay, so now let's go on to the last example that I'm going to do with you. Um, now, in this case, we've got a little bit more happening. So, in this example, I have got 2 cubed, and then in brackets, I have 2 to the power of 4 multiplied by 3 cubed squared. Okay, so first, Bedmas says I have to do anything that's inside the brackets first that I can do. Now, I can't do anything with the stuff that's inside the brackets here because they have different bases. Okay, so I can't do anything with that. That's really as simple as it can get. So then the next thing I go on to is my exponent. My exponent is, now I need to apply this exponent to the things inside the bracket. It's not being applied to the 2 cube because it's not inside the bracket. It's not part of the base of that power. Okay, so the 2 cubed is going to stay as it is for now. But I'm going to take this exponent and apply it to the things inside the bracket here. I'm going to keep it in brackets though, because I'm, or I could write a multiplication if I wanted. But I'm just going to keep it in brackets. It's easier for me anyway. And I'm going to take this 2 to the power of 4 and raise it to the power of 2. And that gives me 2 to the power of 8. Multiplied by, I do the same thing with the 3 to the power of 3. Raise it to the power of 2. That gives me 3 to the power of 6. Okay, so now that I've got that, I'm going to multiply my 2 cubed by that. Okay, now when I multiply my 2 cubed by that, I've got 2 cubed times 2 to the power of 8. They have the same base, so I can simplify those two together, keep the base the same, and then I add the exponents. 3 plus 8 is 11, times 3 to the power of 6 doesn't change because there's no other powers that have a base of 3. Okay, so that's how you would do that example. So now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to work on for yourself. These are the last ones that you're going to be doing today. And I'm going to give you four minutes to work on these.
Okay, so let's go through those examples. So question A, we had 5 to the power of 4, and then in brackets, 5 squared times 7 cubed, close the brackets cubed. Okay, so first of all, the 5 to the power of 4, I'm not going to do anything to at the moment. But inside the brackets, I'm going to have 5 squared cubed is 5 to the power of 6 times 7 cubed cubed again is 7 to the power of 9. Okay, so now I'm going to take that and I'm going to multiply it together. That gives me 5 to the power of 4 plus 6 is 10. I can add those exponents because they have the same bases. And then times 7 to the power of 9, which doesn't change because there are no powers with a no other powers with a base of 7. Okay, then question B. We've got 2 to the power of 4 times 3 to the power of 5 times 5 to the power of 6 in brackets. Then multiplied by 2 cubed times 3 squared times 5 to the power of 4, also in brackets, cubed. Okay, so first, this over here is not going to change. There's no exponent outside, so it's just going to stay as it is. But this one, I need to apply the exponent to all of the powers inside, or all of the factors inside. Okay, so over here, I'm going to have 2 cubed, cubed again is 2 to the power of 9, times 3 squared cubed is 3 to the power of 6, times 5 to the power of 4 cubed is 5 to the power of 12. And then I'm going to multiply these together. So now I need to look at all the things that have the same bases, and I'm going to multiply them together and add their exponents. So I've got 2 to the power of 4 and 2 to the power of 9. That gives me 2 to the power of 13 times 3 to the power of 5 and 3 to the power of 6 gives me 3 to the power of 11. And then 5 to the power of 6 times 5 to the power of 12 is 5 to the power of 18. So for question B, you should have got 2 to the power of 13 times 3 to the power of 11 times 5 to the power of 18. And then question C, we've got 2 cubed times 5 squared in brackets to the power of 4, and then we've got 2 to the power of 4 times 5 cubed in brackets to the power of 3. Okay, so now in this case, I've got an exponent for my first set of brackets, and I've got an exponent for my second set of brackets, so I'm going to have to sort both of them out first. So this one over here, I've got 2 to the power of 12 times 5 to the power of 8. And then over here, I've got 2 to the power of 12 again times 5 to the power of 9. And now I'm going to multiply those together. So I have 2 to the power of 12 times 2 to the power of 12 is 2 to the power of 24 times... 5 to the power of 8 times 5 to the power of 9 is 5 to the power of 17. Okay, so that's what you should have got for question C. And then the last one, question D, we have in square brackets and then in round brackets, 2 cubed times 3 squared, and outside the round brackets I've got a square, and outside the square brackets I've got a cube. Okay, so first of all, I am going, there are actually two ways that I could do this. Okay, I can apply the square to everything inside and then apply the cube to everything inside or I can kind of work from the outside in I can, and I can apply the cube to the square and then apply it to everything inside. So that's actually what I'm, actually I'm going to show you both ways. Okay, so first let's do it where I do the square to everything inside. Okay, so I've got 2 to the power of 3 times 2 is 6, times 3 to the power of 2 times 2 is 4. And that is being cubed, okay? And then I'm going to take that 3 and I'm going to apply it over here. That gives me 2 to the power of 18, times 3 to the power of 12. So that is the one way of doing it. The other way of doing it... is to say that over here I've got brackets with an exponent and this whole thing is the base of that power. 
okay? So I'm going to take that whole thing, and I'm going to use my rule of, a, of, raising a prod, of raising a power to a power, and I'm going to multiply my exponents and keep the base the same. So over here, I'm going to then keep this 2 cubed times 3 squared the same, and I'm going to raise the power to a power, and I'm going to multiply those exponents. So I've got 2 times 3 is 6. And then I'm going to take the 6 and apply it to the factors inside. So that gives me 2 to the power of 18 times 3 to the power of 12. And you can see it's exactly the same answer that we got when we did it this method as well. So you can choose, in a case like this, you can choose which way around you want to do it. You can apply this exponent first or you can apply that this exponent first and it doesn't actually make any difference it'll work both ways now please note all of these examples that we've done in this lesson there have been no addition no subtraction it's been either multiplication inside the brackets or it's been division inside the brackets because we're working with raising products to powers okay and division uh, works with multiplication as well so it works for fractions as well but as soon as you have a plus or a minus inside the brackets you cannot use this rule then we're going to be learning different methods that you're going to be using for things like that so please be aware that all of these examples we've been doing when you're using this rule it's only when there's multiplication or division inside the brackets you cannot have additional subtraction because then the rules don't work in the same way okay so that is how we work with raising a product to a power now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.